Hello, and welcome to this lesson on electric field streamlines and sketches of fields. Up to this point, we've dealt primarily with calculating the electric field at given points. And these electric fields are caused by point charges or volume charges or line charges or sheet charges. But we've been stuck with calculating those fields at just one point. So for example, if we have a charged point Q, we know that there's an electric field emanating from that point. And we calculate the electric field emanating from that charge by using Coulomb's law and calculating it at that point. And so far that's been really great. But now in this lesson, what we wanna do is develop a mathematical definition for all of these field lines or streamlines at once. And it turns out that it's relatively easy to do if you know a little bit of differential equations. So each of these lines emanating from our point charge are called streamlines. And they represent the vectors that emanate out from the charge, the vectors that correspond or make up the electric field. So what we need is an equation for the entire vector field. And that equation looks like this. Imagine that we have a line of charge Imagine that we have a line of charge along the z-axis. Now we'll only concern ourselves with the streamlines that emanate along the xy plane so that we can take advantage of that symmetry. The equation for the vector field of all of these streamlines is this. The y component of the electric field divided by the x component of the electric field is equal to dy dx. Now, if you're familiar with your differential equations, you'll recognize this as a separable differential equation. Which often have the form which have the standard form, n of y times dy dx is equal to m of x. So all we need to do is take this separable equation and solve it to get a solution. Let's go ahead and do an example. Imagine that we have that line charge extending along the z-axis and it has its electric field lines extending across the xy plane. And the field in cylindrical coordinates is given as this. E is equal to 1 over rho, remember rho is the line charge density, times the unit vector A sub rho. Now the first thing we need to do in order to get it into this equational form, we need to convert this electric field in cylindrical coordinates into its equivalent representation in rectangular coordinates. And that's pretty simple. So. Remember we talked before about conversions between cylindrical coordinates and rectangular coordinates. If you're not familiar with that, go back and watch that video. But basically it hinges around the fact that we've got a triangle. And remember that the hypotenuse is rho, and that's equal to that Green theorem, x squared over y squared, the square root. And we have x and y. So 1 over rho simply becomes 1 over the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now remember to get the x and y components. 
we take the dot products of a sub rho dotted with a sub x, which is equal to the cosine of phi, which remember is SOKOTOA is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so that'll be x over the square root of x squared plus y squared. And e sub y is equal to a rho dotted with a y, which is equal to the sine of phi, which is equal to opposite over adjacent, excuse me, opposite over hypotenuse, y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. So when we put our rectangular electric field together, we're going to see that E is equal to 1 over the square root of x squared plus y squared times x over the square root of x squared plus y squared times the unit vector a sub x plus y over the square root of x squared plus y squared times the unit vector a sub. We can use distributive properties to simplify just a little bit and get our final form here that is e is equal to x over x squared plus y times the unit vector a sub x plus y over x squared plus y squared, oops, I missed the squared over there, times the unit vector a sub y. So now we're ready to actually go ahead and solve our differential equation. So we have the x component of e over the y component of e is equal to dy over dx. So let's write it all out. x over x squared plus y squared over y over x squared plus y squared equals dy over dx. And we're left with the differential equation x over y is equal to dy dx. Now we're ready to follow the technique for solving our separable differential equation. Remember, we want it in the form function n of y times dy is equal to the function m of x dx. So we'll rearrange this a little bit and we'll get 1 over y dy is equal to 1 over x dx. The next step is to integrate both sides. So we'll take the integral of 1 over y dy is equal to the integral of 1 over x dx. And we'll get that that's equal to the natural log of y plus c is equal to the natural log of x also plus c. We can combine both these constants by bringing this other plus c over here and plus c minus c is all just constants so we don't really care and we'll get the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x plus c. The constants just sort of absorb each other. We're not really interested in what they are just yet. Now, we can simplify this even farther by raising each side, or rather by taking Euler's constant, e raised to each side. So e to the natural log of y equals e to the natural log of x plus c. Remember that adding exponents it's the same as multiplying, so e to the c times e to the natural log of x. e raised to some constant is itself just a constant, so one more round of simplification here. It's going to be equal to c times e to the natural log of x, so it's okay to play it fast and loose with the constants. And finally, e raised to the natural log of something is equal to that something, and so we get y is equal to c times x. And this is our general solution. Now, if we want to know the value at any given point, or the value of the electric field at any given point, I should say, 
we need an initial value. So we'd say, let's look at the electric field P, negative 2, 7, and 10. So now instead of having to calculate the electric field for that point, we now have a general solution for our electric field. And all we got to do is plug in points. So here x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 7. So we have 7 is equal to c times negative 2. So c is equal to 7 over negative 2, which gives us c is equal to negative 3.5. So our exact solution is, we'll say at point, negative two, seven, and what was the other one? We don't really care about it, 10. We have that it's y equals negative 3.5x. The streamline of the electric field that passes through this point is given or described by the equation y equals minus 3.5x. And there we go. Not a lot of physics in this lesson, but a little bit of mathematics and differential equations. So just to recap real quick, go back up to the top and say if we want to know the electric field given by any points, it's going to be equal to this separable differential equation. You've got to take it if it's given in a coordinate system other than rectangular, such as cylindrical coordinates, as are given here. You need to convert it back to rectangular coordinates, and then once you have that, you just solve the separable differential equation to get a general solution, and then once you have the general solution, all you need to do is plug in points to get the electric field lines at that point. So that's this lesson. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Thank you.